I got put on a wait list. There's most likely a chance that you'll be going on today. There's not very many standbys today. Do you have any uh, dangerous goods such as propane, fireworks, ammunition, anything like that? I have bear spray. That's fine. Good morning. Here we are down at the ferry dock getting ready to board the Northern Sea Wolf Ferry to Bella Coola. And I can't tell you how excited that makes me feel because I had no idea that I was actually going to be able to get on this ferry. It's been a little bit confusing to say the least, but I decided I would show up at the ferry dock in person and they found a space for me on the ferry. Please have your boarding pass and photo ID ready. I'm so excited and so happy that I'm going to get to go to this town that I've wanted to go to for so long. Please return to your vehicle's preparation for loading. Thank you and have a pleasant voyage. <laughs> To me, it just represents kind of the fulfillment of a, a dream of going to a certain place that I've tried to go to before in the past and it, it didn't work out. We want you to enjoy the journey and be safe, so please listen to our quick safety tips. Well, this is like the main sunshine viewing area deck. It's really big and spacious. You can come up here, be in the fresh air, really take in the views, work on your suntan, and see these beautiful mountains off in the distance. On the other side, they're a little steeper, and there's actually a lot of snow on the mountains. There's kind of like a, a solarium. These stairs are pretty steep here. You got to use the handrails. This roof, it's all covered in glass, and so it heats up underneath and it keeps it nice and warm. But on a day like today, it's pretty warm already. You can see the life-saving equipment over here. We've got a, a Zodiac boat with a Mercury motor and it says Northern Sea Wolf. That's the name of the ferry here. Beautiful big peaks, snow-covered mountains, and then the wake of the ferry disappearing behind us and the sunlight glittering off the water. Canadian flag flying here overhead. I get the day off to just relax, hang out in the sunshine, let the view go by without expending any effort of my own. So it does feel pretty good to kind of have a ferry trip like this in the middle of a really long motorcycle trip. It truly really is very relaxing. I took a nap down below. I've been up on deck here four or five times. I had breakfast, I had lunch from the, the cafeteria, and I've been looking at maps and just kind of relaxing, taking in the scenery and having a really good day off from the motorcycle journey. This ferry trip is awesome. We left Port Hardy this morning, headed across open water for a bit, and then we got into these inlets where it's nothing but steep, forest covered mountains on either side of us. It's like taking a cruise to Alaska, except it's only half a day long. We're gonna get into Bella Coola about 5.30 tonight, and I have no idea where I'm gonna sleep. I don't have any reservations. But right now, let's just continue to enjoy this beautiful afternoon ferry ride. What a way to see this country. It's like combining a cruise with a motorcycle trip at the same time. It's just beautiful. And we even saw some whales this morning. How cool was that? Well, they just paged me on the intercom and my motorcycle actually tipped over down below on this open water passage. When I loaded my motorcycle on there, I started to tie it down myself and the attendant, he asked me to hand him a block and I told him the block doesn't fit. It's not big enough. He said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. So I left my bike in the hands of this attendant and then I get called a couple hours later, it had tipped over. They said that that particular crew member was a new person and they were gonna have a talk with him. As far as I can tell, nothing is broken and it has all these protection parts on it and crash bars and hand guards and the panniers. So I don't think anything is damaged, but it did get tipped over. My advice would be double check the work they do, make sure it's tied down properly so that you don't have the same kind of issues that I had. So we've got about an hour left on this ferry ride and we should be arriving at Bella Coola very soon. Here I am, woo -hoo, yippee. This has been a long time coming. It's been, you know, to over 20 years that I've been wanting to come out here. The first time I tried coming out here was in the, I would say in the late 1990s or early, early 2000s. And uh, wasn't able to make it out here, but now here I am. 
I am gonna try to find a place to uh, sleep tonight, get something to eat, check out the town, and then hit the road tomorrow. There is one road in and out of this town, and it's hundreds of miles long, and it rises from the coast up into the mountains at one of the steepest grades of all the roads in Canada. Sounds pretty incredible. Gonna check that out tomorrow. This is what the road from the ferry terminal into the town of Bella Coola looks like. It's a pretty short distance into downtown. It's nice, heavily forested, snow-capped mountains off in the distance. Now we're coming into Bella Coola, and the main center of town is going to be right up here to the left. There's a museum. There's a gas station on the left. A little grocery store here on the right. I did get a map where we circled some towns that have gas on the way, so I know that, that I'll be able to get gas. There's at least two places that have gas tomorrow. And then as far as today goes, it's gonna be gas up here and eat here in town before seven because there's only two restaurants in town and they both close at seven. And then he recommended that I travel up, up the road just a little ways to uh, another town, another village, another place that has some lodging opportunities, some campgrounds. And so that's kind of my plan is maybe just to, to gas up right here, to get a bite to eat, to head down the road a short distance. I'm thinking it might be like 10, 15 miles, something like that, to go to this kind of Norwegian influenced village down the road and then maybe try to find a place to camp. Well, that was interesting. I stopped at Freddy's restaurant. It's one of two restaurants here in Bella Coola. It's a Native American server with Latin American Caribbean music playing in the background and their menu was a combination of Indian and Italian and American food. So quite the multicultural experience already in this little town way out here in the hinterlands of mid-British Columbia. I'm gonna see if there's a grocery store open and then I have to head 10 miles out of town to try to find uh, my campsite. One of the things about these long distance motorcycle tours is that you roll into these these towns, these places that are like dots on a map and really far away and you have you know these expectations and hopes and dreams about like discovering that place and getting there and then you get there, you get here and you have very little time to actually get off the bike and explore things. And part of that is because when you travel on a motorcycle like this, it's, it's difficult to get off the bike and away from the bike for any period of time to go explore a city or go hiking or do a tour because you know you have all of your things and there's no, there's no way to lock them up. There's no way to really easily and conveniently just do something like that you're in your motorcycle gear you've got your boots on your jacket you know you walk away from your bike all your luggage is on top you've got your helmet and so the easiest thing to do is just to keep on riding and so you get these really quick short glimpses of places like this on a motorcycle trip it's just kind of, it's, it tends to be a very fast paced on the move affair a bike wants to stay in motion. A motorcycle wants to be in motion and it wants to keep you in motion. And so I get off the ferry in a town like this and it's, you know, it's grab a bite to eat, maybe look for some groceries, find a place to camp and then get out of town, you know, get some gas and get back on the road. You know, I might have only been here for about an hour, but this is my glimpse into Bella Coola. This is my look at it before I get on the road and find my, my place to camp out or stay in a hotel or whatever tonight. It's not a bad thing. I mean, I'm here to ride motorcycles and I'm gonna ride an awesome ride, an awesome road tomorrow, I think, I hope. I'm down here by the water. There's some kind of park with a sign over here that says, don't put your fish guts in the water, which I find interesting. It says that it's slow moving water but when I look at it, it actually looks like it's pretty fast moving. Here's a sign about a little bit of the, the history of the area. The Spuck Anadromous Smelt. And it's only found along the Pacific Northwest Coast. And it's a keystone of the, the local native culture and economy. 
So this is the gas station here in town, and I think it's kind of funny that every single person filling up here is filling up a boat. What people are doing, they're out on the water in their fishing boats more than they are driving. Well, this is my campground where I ended up this evening, and it's pretty nice, actually. The ground is all raked. There's a fire ring here. We're in the tall trees in the forest here. Got a picnic table over here. Got my tent all set up in the woods here. This merino wool clothing that I have been wearing on this trip from Unbound Merino has really been a lifesaver. Of course, I'm drying out my socks like I do every night, my socks and my underwear and my t-shirt. Let them air dry is what you need to do for this merino wool clothing, and that's really all you need to do. You can do that every night and just keep wearing this clothing for a really, really, really long time. I've washed these clothing, this t-shirt, my socks and underwear only three times in a proper washing machine on this trip, and I've been on the road for 40 some days now. So really, really, really can't speak highly enough about this material, this fabric, it's, you know, anti-wicking properties, how it takes that moisture away from your skin, how it doesn't absorb odors. It's really comfortable to wear. Super happy with this unbound merino wool clothing that I'm using. It looks like there's some kind of a viewing platform up here where you can sit and look at the mountains and the river. And this is a powerful, fast flowing river. I had no idea. How beautiful is this, right? So beautiful, the light on the mountains over here and all of the trees and the rock and then this big powerful Bella Coola River right here. Well, this is a really nice, pleasant, well-organized, clean campground, the Rip Rap Campground. It's right here on the Bella Coola River. Kind of feel like I lucked out. This is a little paradise, and I actually wish I had a few more days to just kick back and relax in this awesome campground. There are a number of other people here, but I got a spot in the forest that's kind of tucked away and nice and peaceful and quiet and shady during the daytime. And I'm sure I'm going to sleep really well in my tent tonight. This place is spectacular. This is amazing. There's such a, a feeling of like rugged, overpowering nature all around. These mountains are massive. The way they just rise up literally thousands of feet from this valley floor and the ocean. It's like the, the sea meeting the mountains and, and big mountains, snow, snow cap giant rock slab. And then this campground is really well done. It looks like it's really an old homestead, an old farm of sorts. There's all these really cool outbuildings here. There's a place over here called The Shed, filled with like trunks and chairs and places to sit and period antique authentic furnishings. And then they've got this really well manicured like campground where everything's really taken care of. There's $30 Canadian, you know, I'm not complaining, much cheaper than any hotel that I would have found and to be quite honest you know probably a lot more interesting and beautiful like I just can't believe this environment and these mountains around here they are so spectacular.